think I'll be ready. Oh. I think it'll be just fine. What is up, Who Day Bengals fam? It's Mike coming back at you with another Who Daily. Today is Thursday, March 18th of the year of our Bengals, 2021. Today I want to talk about some stuff that went on on social media. This is awesome, you guys. We're becoming the, the Who Day family. The Bengals uh, Twitter community is becoming a force to be reckoned with. We got the, the hashtag Galladay, P-Y, like Who Day. Uh, number one trending in sports today on Twitter. We tried to get Reefer Madness going on for Riley Reef to try to get um, try to get him uh, on board to help protect Joe Burrow. Um, well, uh, don't really talk much about them. Those guys, you know who they are. Uh, Kenny Galladay, I've talked about on this channel before. Uh, I'm not a huge guy. Look, I think that Kenny Kenny Galladay is a very good wide receiver, but I think next season T Higgins is going to be just as good, if not better, than Kenny Galladay specifically at what Kenny Galladay does best, which is which is uh, uh, contested catches down the field uh, using that big frame and body uh, to get those uh, get those catches. Um, but, you know, if you have two T. Higgins or two Kenny Galladay's, yeah, that's pretty good. Riley Reef would be a very uh, interesting upgrade. I think a, a slight upgrade to Bobby Hart. Uh, you know, he's a little bit technically sloppy, but he keeps guys off your quarterbacks. He does. He, he give up sacks he doesn't give up pressures so that's a good thing if you get him at right at, at right tackle and you can maybe cut Bobby Hart's salary cap number uh, to use that to sign a few few more guys uh, I think that the, the Bengals are hitting their offseason stride here and uh, I want to talk about uh, the Stanford Pro Day uh, which has ha- happened today a couple of really big standouts. Actually, a few pe- few people on there. Uh, we should be watching to slide uh, possibly down, but uh, uh, I want to talk about Simi Fahoku, who's a wide receiver, big six foot four guy, um, and uh, actually Walker Little, um, who uh, two years ago was considered possibly to be OT one uh, in uh, in whatever draft he ended up coming out in. But uh, with everything that's happened, it's been a little bit weird, right? So let's take a look at Semi Fahoku's uh, RAS score, the relative athletic score. If you guys aren't familiar with this, what this is is it takes uh, the measurements, the combine measurements essentially of every player, and it compares it to every other player that's <laughs> ever done the combine and then ranks it and basically gives you a kind of composite look score of, of what that player is, right? Um, so Semi Fahoku, 6'3 uh, six, and change, he's almost 6'4, 222 pounds. And he is fast, fast, fast. Um, he he ran a four 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 forty. Um, he's got uh, crazy uh, crazy good uh, arm length. He, his athletic testing, you know, the twenty yard split's actually pre, actually really good. Ten yard split, it's okay, right? Shuttles just okay. Three cone drills just okay. But the thing is, uh, you expect that out of a dude that's six foot four, right? I mean, that's going to happen. But who he reminds me of is Chase Claypool, and I'll show you why here in a minute. But I wanted to show you guys real quick Walker Little as well. Walker Little, uh, his RAS score, these are out of 10, right? 8.78. It's really, it's a good RAS score. Uh, the thing is, he's hyper athletic. He's really, he's a really athletic uh, tackle. And you can see that uh, show up in the shuttle and the three cone drill down here. Um, he's also, you know, I, here's what I'm worried about. He's not super strong. 24 reps on the bench press is not great. Uh, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not terrible. It's, it's, you know, you can see it's a yellow score, 6.57, but for an offensive tackle, uh, going up against, if you, if, you know, hypothetically, if the Bengals are drafting you, you're going to have to block, uh, you know, uh, as a right tackle, you're going to have to block off of that side, the best edge rushers in the NFL. You know, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to block miles Garrett twice a year. You're going to have to block TJ Watt twice a year, right? You need power and agility to block those guys and and you know maybe he can add strength you know maybe you can add strength to this guy and maybe that maybe that is kind of something that he lost from sitting out for a little bit you know is that 20 but i look for 30 plus bench reps or you have to be close 28 28 okay 30 plus is what you're looking for but uh let's get into a little bit of actually a little bit of film on these guys and i can show you what i'm talking about with uh with the prospects all right let's hey check him out that's Cassius, my dog. Let's get into some of this film study 
uh, real quick. We got Semi Fahoku. I want to show you guys a little bit. So he he today just ran really fast at a pro day. Uh, I showed you his his Raz card. He's six foot four, just a smidge under six foot four, and a dude that's six four and can run four four four. Um, he's gonna get attention, right? So let's check it out. First play here, you can see. Uh, first, this is the first. Cat, you got um, man coverage here, but they're gonna drop pretty deep on this. You can see he get up, gets a bump, boom, inside, perfect. That's what you want, guys. That's what you want out of. Uh, that's what you want out of a Bengals wide receiver at the next level. So, what's really interesting is you can see him. You can get he jabs and gets that inside. He knows he where he wants to take this. He he actually is creating uh, by jabbing and coming inside. Uh, the receiver's playing outside coverage because I think the receiver realizes he's trying to get to the sideline. Fahoku, Fahoku sees this, jabs, gets inside, but still understands that his quarterback's going to lead him to the outside. His quarterback's going to lead him uh, to the sideline. So you can see him start to cre start to fade toward the sideline because he knows that, right? And that's also where the where the uh, where the cushion is, uh, where the soft spot in the zone is on the two deep coverage. Next play. Next play, you're just going to see him turn on the burners. But this time, this time, this corner is going to give him some more respect. Check this out. Well, watch him get inside. Boom, right there. He knows this is where the play is designed to go to, to split this, to split this uh, deep coverage. And instead of fading toward the outside, which he very easily could have, this is a play action. He's looking right now. Look up at the safety. Where is he? Is he, is he shading over the top? No, I'm going to get inside. He sees the same thing that his quarterback sees right here. You can, you can see, uh, the numbers, the back, the, the back of the Jersey of the corner. When you see that, even though he's got his head turned back to the football and the quarterback also sees that boom, it's go time, get inside, get that leverage and beat the safety. Great catch. Next play. We're going to take a look at uh, what happens when you kind of give him too much cushion. Uh, this is what you want to see out of a deep threat like this, a guy that you have to respect his speed, but he can break it off on you. Watch him right here. Boom. Yes. So he knows he can get, he's got this cushion all day long. As long as the, as long as this inside backer here, the inside nickel corner, the inside nickel corner doesn't uh, float over to take out, take away the, uh, to take away uh, the, the flats area on the zone. He knows that he can break this route off. It doesn't happen. Boom. Give it here. Great stuff. Next, you want to see, look, this is a Bengals channel. If, you, if you're talking about possibly drafting this guy, you want to draft a wide receiver that you know is going to give you, uh, Joe Burrow's going to make time in the pocket. He's going to move around. He navigates the pocket really, really well. So what you're going to need is a guy who understands what to do when that happens. And that means he can get in the football, right? And that's what he does here. You can see, here's the quarterback slides through the pocket. He's got the, in his face, boom. You know, he recognizes it, comes back and gets the football. Next play. This is just next level play when, when you can see, okay, we talked about he has four 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 speed. He's six foot four ish, just under just under six foot four. Um, you can see he can break off routes, but how's his how are his hands? Well watch this. This is just uh uh We were talking about uh Galladay earlier. Galladay doesn't run four 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 speed. He just doesn't. But he makes catches like that all the time. What this means is this corner is able to run with him, but he's able to use his body to get, to create that separation at the very end. He even got a P, uh, PI call on this one-handed snag. Look at that. bring it down, big fella, my guy. Man, that's good stuff. Next next play, just little little flea flicker down the middle of the field. But look, here's the thing about a flea flicker. There's one route usually on a flea flicker. If, and if they if they read it, which these corner the, 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 to, to their to their credit, Oregon State read this, and they had they had the one route double teamed. Problem is, it's like it's uh, semi Fahoku or Fahoko, and you just can't. It's just even if you've got him covered, he's just so big. He really reminds me quite a bit of Chase Claypool from last year's draft. All right, let's move on. Take a look at some uh, some of Walker Little's. Uh, some of Walker Little's tape. Uh, he's got a weird situation going on where he hasn't played in a couple years. He took the COVID season, um, and 
uh, he just there's a lot of questions. So you could see this guy slide. The reason I'm putting him in here, the reason I'm showing you guys his RAS score, and I'm showing you a little bit of tape, is because you could. This is a guy that you could conceivably conceivably see slide possibly to the top of the third round if if teams just aren't sure on him. The problem is he's been a uh, just him. Uh, on past sets, getting good distance and keeping this guy, uh, keeping keeping his man away from the quarterback and creating a path for him to escape, right? And you know, if you give Joe Burrow a path to escape, he'll find it, right? Next play, more of the same, but this time it's more of a bull rush. This is just showing you that he can do both. He can get, he can get you wide and, and block that speed rusher, this bull rush. This guy just tries to overpower him and just you aren't going to do it. Like he's got too long arms. With a bull rush, what you have to, what a bull rush really is, is a straight. Is you get a straight arm, uh, you get a straight arm into the body, right? So you, you're 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 turning your body so you can get length from this shoulder back, and you're getting it on the shoulder of that tackle, and that knocks him off balance, and he has to continue to reset, right? Well, the thing is, super athletic tackles like Walker Little can just continue to reset, or he doesn't have to worry about it. His arms are longer than yours. He can he can maintain that those points of contact uh, without knocking himself off balance, and that's what he does here. So here uh, now I want to show you a play where the defensive uh, t- the defensive end just knows he's beat. He almost kind of knows he's beat before the play starts. Um, so what he's going to do is he's going to speed rush and then try to disengage and and kind of do a delayed stunt back around the inside. Walker Little has is having none of it. He just follows him. He's like, nah, I got you. You ain't going nowhere. Uh, next I want to show, uh, something that I know Zach Taylor, uh, and that run game coordinator, uh, really likes to do. He likes, he likes these athletic linemen that he can pull, right? He can pull around the, uh, the other side. You see him pull pretty much every position on the line at some point will probably pull, um, as long as they're athletic enough to do it here. You see him pulling around to lead block for the run to the outside, right? All the way from the tackle position, getting all the way across that line, and then getting up and boom, take that linebacker out of there. That linebacker and just clean him out. He had nothing to do on how, on what to do. Now I want to talk about like some of his flaws. Right, uh, right here, what you'll see is he kind of pops back out of his stance too fast. Uh, he pops back out and it, and he throws himself off balance a little bit. Re, uh, he he resets and then attacks. The problem is with you can get away with that with whoever this northwestern you know northwestern defensive end is. Um, you do that against Miles Garrett first per se, uh, and he will put you straight on your ass. So he's got some stuff to clean up. He's not a perfect prospect, obviously. He's got his flaws, uh, but just check it out, right? See, watch him pop back. You see him? He kind of he kind of wiggles his knee a little bit. That's because he's not chopping. Instead of uh, he kind of takes one step back with his with his left foot, and, and then his right foot gets out of wonk and or out of it gets out of out of line. If you're chopping back, uh, that's why you see those offensive linemen run these drills where they're chopping their feet real fast. That's what you're. That's what you're supposed to do to get de- depth on a pass set. The problem is this isn't even a pass. Uh, this is a run. So, for some reason, on this run play, he doesn't fire straight out. You know. Uh, so, you know, there's a little bit, little bit of rust. Here's a pretty bad one. Here's one where it looks like he's just confused on what his assignment is because this is a run play to the right. And he's playing left tackle. So what that means, what, what he's trying to do uh, is he's trying to get a he's trying to get a bump he's trying to get a uh, a bump block on this um, on this defensive end just enough to keep him from crashing down the line of scrimmage so that he can then shed so that he can then reach and go block the uh, go block the linebacker in case there's a cutback. That's what he's trying to do. What he actually does is just whiffs on the defensive end. He thinks that defensive end goes around and he's what he's thinking is. I just can't let him crash down inside of me, right? So as soon as that defensive end goes around him a little bit, he kind of, uh, instead of getting that bump block that he needs to get, he all, he he all he, he automatically just kind of goes up to the linebacker. And what that does is this uh, this this defensive end is fast enough to get to the ball carrier, right? You just can't. That's not good. You don't want that, right? Just wanted to end it on a positive note because this is a good player, guys. Uh, right here, you can see him. This is just man to man. Power versus power. I want to get to your quarterback. You're trying to stop me, stuff. And uh, he just says no, not not today, not today, demon. Ain't happening. Well, I'm gonna leave you guys. I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Um, big time who day. Love you guys. Thanks for coming back to the channel every day and watching these videos. I think the future's super bright for these for this team. I think 2021 is gonna be an awesome ride, and I can't wait to do it with you guys. Who day!